In this video, we will discuss decal type and references. So, in the previous video, we were introduced to the decal type and we have seen how it works. Now, we will see how decal types and references work together. Now, when we apply decal type to an expression that is not a variable, we get the type that the expression yields. So, we have already seen this in the previous lecture when we started studying about decal type that whenever we apply decal type to an expression, then whatever would be the type that is returned if that expression was evaluated, then that would be the type that it would yield. Now, because of this, some expressions will cause decal type to yield a reference type. So, sometimes when we evaluate what would be yielded by an expression, it could also be the case that a reference type is yielded. So, let's take an example here to understand this. Here, as you can see, I am declaring an integer i, which is initialized to 42. And then we have a pointer p, which is pointing to the address of i, that means the reference of i. And then we have a reference r, which is bound to i. Okay, so far so good. These are just normal declarations. Now, here we are making use of the decal type and we are saying r plus 0 and then b here. Now, if you look at this, we already said that whatever is the type that would be yielded if this expression was evaluated, that would be assigned to b. Now, if you look at this, we have r here and r here is of a reference type. And if you remember in the previous lecture, we already said that whenever we are declaring a reference type, then it must be initialized. So, wouldn't b be a reference type and since it is not initialized, shouldn't it throw an error? No. Why? Because though r is of a reference type, when we apply this addition to this reference type here, it is actually going to yield an integer. So, the result of addition of an integer type with a reference type would yield an integer. So, though this addition is not actually going to take place, but if it did take place, we know that it would yield an integer and that integer would be assigned to b. So, remember that here b is going to be a normal integer and not a reference type integer. And because of that, it is perfectly fine not to initialize b at this point. So, that's why b is an uninitialized integer and it is a perfectly fine declaration over here. Now, next, here I am saying decal type asterisk p and then c. So, here what it would mean is that we know that p is a pointer type, but when we dereference a pointer here within this decal type like this, it is going to yield the reference of p, okay? And what is that? That is going to be an integer reference. And because of that, this c is also going to be an integer reference type. And as we already said, when a reference type is declared, it must be initialized. And since c is not initialized here, then it is going to throw an error. Alright, now here is another very interesting and an important thing that we should keep in mind. Decal type of a parenthesized variable is always a reference. Now, what does this mean? When we apply decal type to a variable without any parenthesis, we get the type of that variable. Now, we have seen that we apply decal type and when we put a variable under its parenthesis, we are going to get the type of that particular variable. Now, when we say without any parenthesis, what I mean is that there is no parenthesis within the parenthesis that is already there of the decal type. Let me make it clear. If we wrap the variable's name in one or more set of parentheses, the compiler will evaluate the operand as an expression. This is what we mean here. You see that we have this decal type and we have this yellow parenthesis, which is actually the part of this decal type's syntax. And then within that, instead of writing simple i, I am putting that i again within another set of braces. Now, if I do this, what happens is that it is going to evaluate this i as an expression and what it would return is a reference. So, a parenthesis variable is always a reference in decal type. So, basically, this d now will be of an integer reference. And why is it an error here? Because as we know, if it is a reference type, it always must be initialized. But here, d is an integer reference, but since it is not initialized, it is going to throw an error. Now, next, here we see I am making a normal declaration, decal type, and then within single parenthesis, I am writing i here and e. So, this is a normal type of declaration. i is an integer, we know it. And then that same integer is going to be applied to e. So, e is an uninitialized integer. But be very careful when you are putting it within another set of braces again. So, this i and this i are very different. This is a normal integer, but when it is enclosed within double parenthesis like this, the compiler is going to evaluate i and it is going to return it as a 
reference type. Okay. So keep that in mind. So it is very important. Decal type within this kind of double parenthesis is always a reference type. But if decal type is within single parenthesis like this, it will be a reference type only if the variable itself is a reference. Otherwise, it is going to be the same type as this variable. Okay, so let's go to Visual Studio Code and just put in these declarations that we saw as examples in this lecture and let's see what the compiler tells us. Okay, so here I have all the declarations that we just made in the lecture in the examples that I showed you and here I am trying to print the type of each of these variables here. For example, I have i here, p and then r is here, then b, c. Okay, now before I run the program, we see that Visual Studio Code already is telling me that there are two errors over here. Okay, which were the errors which I showed you in the examples. So before I fix them, we will just run the code and we'll see what the compiler has to say and then we'll see how we can fix it. Okay, and also at the end, I am printing the values of each of these variables so that we can take a look at what are the values. Okay, so if I hover over this C here, it says reference variable C requires initializer and same is the case with this D as well. Okay, so we already know the reason. I have already explained it to you. Anyway, let's run the program first. All right, the name of the file is decal type 2.cpp and I type G++ name of the file and I hit enter. And obviously, as expected, we are going to face errors at line 8, which is here and line number 9. And what does it say? C is declared as a reference, but it is not initialized. And what about D? D is also declared as a reference, but not initialized. Okay, so these are the errors. Now, let's try to fix it. So, let me say C equal to 0. Now, is this going to work? Okay, it looks like it is still not working. The underline is still there. Now, what does it say? Here it says, initial value of reference to non-constant must be an L value. Now, what is an L value? In C++, L value is something that has an identifiable location. Now, when we are just evaluating an expression or if we are just considering an expression, an expression cannot have an identifiable location. An identifiable location can only be held by something like a variable. So because of that, I cannot simply initialize it to zero like this. Instead, it should be an L value. L value means it should be something that has an identifiable address. So for example, I can say C equal to I because I as we know is something that has an identifiable location. Now you see as I save the program, that error symbol is gone. Now the same goes for D. So if I just initialize D to let's say 1, it is going to throw the same error. So again, it must be an L value. So what L value can we give? We can give anything, let's say B. All right, now we see the error is gone. So let me just clear my screen and let's run the program again. G++ name of the file. Now you see it is compiled without any errors and let's run the output file a.exe. Okay, now you see it is running correctly. Now let's see. So here we are trying to print the type of each of these variables. So i as you can see is obviously an integer. So it is i. Okay, this i here means integer. Okay, it is not this variable i. And then next we have p. Now p is a pointer to an integer. So that's why it says p i. And then what is r? r is a reference to an integer. So since it is also an integer type, it is i. And then what is b? b as you can see here is declared using the decal type and as I already told you, r plus 0 is going to yield an integer. So, b is also going to be an integer. So, it is i here again and similarly for c. So, for c also, as I already told you, this asterisk p is going to be dereference and it is going to return the reference integer and because of that, c is a reference to an integer. Even as I hover over it, you can see that it says int ampersand c. So, that is a type. It is an integer i. And also for D, if I hover over it, you can see it is also going to be a reference type to an integer. Okay, so I already explained this. I will not go into that again. And E, as you can see here, if I hover over it, it says it's a simple integer. And now if we take a look at the values that were printed here, first of all, I was printed. What is I? I is equal to 42. And what is P? P actually is holding the address of I. So this is the address of I that is printed here. And then we have R which is a reference that is bound to i. So that is why the value of i is printed here in R. And then what is b? b is a normal integer and then we did not initialize it to any value. So because of that, it took some random value over here. Okay, the compiler just gave it some random integer value. Next we have c. 
what is C? C as you can see is going to be a, a reference type and it is bound to I. We initialize it to I and I's value is 42. That is why 42 is printed here in C. And for D again if you look here D is going to be a reference type and then we initialized it to B. And B as you can see it took a random value here and that same value is printed over here. The compiler assigned this value and that value is printed here in D as well because D is equal to B. And then finally we have E and again E is a normal integer and we did not initialize it to any value nor did we assign it anything because of that it took some random value over here. Alright so that was about the tricky decal type and the way it works. So keep in mind these details that we have studied and this could be very helpful for you because these are tricky questions that can be asked in interviews and stuff like that. So I hope this concept about decal type and references are clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.